United States and the Vice President. Thank you. I want you to know it's been a hectic day here. That's why we had to call Senator Dole and Secretary Baldrich and uh, away from your session today. And uh, at least one of them is still tied up. <laughs> I think he's beginning to feel like a hostage. <laughs> but I appreciate all that you've done for the Republican Party and for our administration in these past four and not quite a half years. You've worked closely with Congressman Vanderjack. The guy's done a tremendous job in keeping our party in a position to accomplish the things we came here to do. So, Guy, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. President. And thanks are also due to Rich DeVos for the time and energy that he's put into this effort. With your leadership during the 1982 and 1984 election cycles, the Republican Le Congressional Leadership Council was able to funnel $4 million into Republican congressional campaigns. And we saw those resources produce great activity and results at the grassroots level all over the country. In 1982, at the height of a recession, we limited our losses then our gains in the House in 1984 kept open the door of change. Republican control of the Senate, of course, has been absolutely indispensable. And I know that many of you were instrumental in giving us the means to keep control of the Senate. I hope I can count on all of you next time around. It does seem anymore as if those in-between uh, elections come very often. Here it is. <laughs> I'm. I'm still uh, looking at buttons, campaign buttons in my desk drawer, and uh, now there's another one coming along. Well, if we can keep the Senate and keep increasing our numbers in the House, we can make, and this is my dream, these coming years the most productive and innovative in our history. The potential is there because there's so much left to do. We must continue to fight to reduce government spending. This has never been an easy job. It was once observed that anyone who robs Peter to pay Paul is bound to have the support of Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, I've been saying for a lot of years that that philosophy of our opponents of robbing Peter to pay Paul ignores the fact that Peter went bankrupt a long time ago. <laughs> There's still a bee's nest of interest groups in Washington and they start buzzing every time anyone talks about reducing federal spending. We came here to make some fundamental changes, to reinvigorate our economy, to strengthen our defenses, and to make our country more prosperous and more secure. And we can all be proud of what's been accomplished in that way so far. It makes it almost worth being in Washington instead of in California. Uh, almost. Uh, I miss California. And there's still a lot to do before we move back there. Your friendship and support since coming here have meant a lot to me. So I thank you for your generosity and your commitment. And I know that that commitment is for a long time to come. It isn't just going to pass away after an election or two. And there's one thing above all that would be wonderful to see. What is it, only about four times in the or four years out of the last 50 have the Republicans held both houses of the Congress. And then these last four, we've held the one house. But that means that for most of the half century, the House of Representatives has been in our opponent's hands. And uh, we've got to do more than get the White House. And I had that for seven years out of eight as a governor of California. The wrong side was over in the legislature. That's why I had 992 vetoes. <laughs> but uh, it would be just wonderful. 
uh, to turn around at along about 1988, uh, find not only the White House but Capitol Hill in the hands of Republicans. We've never had a chance for that. You've been standing here long enough, and uh, there are more enjoyable things to do, so I'll quit talking and just thank you all. God bless you. Thank you. I know how pressing these days are. Rick McIntyre was thrilled with your call, and the whole conference applauded your call. President, thank you. I have a man who came from Leningrad. I need one quick picture. All right. He's a symphony conductor of the Grand Rapids Symphony. New Americans. New Americans. Mr. President, we received your letter after we became citizens and we were very touched by it. It was two years ago. Oh, yes. And we are just absolutely thrilled that we can be here with you today. There were 200,000 people in downtown Grand Rapids, where you spoke recently, to celebrate and they became citizens on the 4th of July. So we were just the two. Just the two. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Like me to say a few words. Yeah. Say a few words. So we gotta have a picture taken to get. Yeah, I'm just looking for Pat. Right? 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 I just started last fall in September. Are you this summer? Are you gonna be with us?
Thank you. 